I'm Justin, and I love great smoked ribs. But, like most people, I don't always have access to a grill or a smoker. So, what can I do? Well, I'm going to show you how to make great smoked ribs anyways. But, first things first, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a cooler, Ziploc bags, ice, cooling racks, ribs, and I'm using a smoke generator called a smoke pistol. It's going to allow us to add smoke to our ribs without adding any heat. I got mine at OutCookerProducts.com. Now, enough small talk. Let's get started. All right, so this is what you start with, a regular rack of ribs. And it has this membrane to separate it from the chest cavity, but we need to fillet that off with a knife so that your rub and your smoke can penetrate the meat. I've already done one, and this is what it should look like when you get done. All right, so now that you've got your membrane off, it's time to season your meat. I'm using a dry rub recipe that I just found online. There's lots of them. Just look for something that you want. You want to use a lot of the rub, and you want to massage it into the meat so you get plenty of flavor. And we're going to let these sit while we go work on our smoker. All right, so for our smoker, we're going to use a nice, clean, dry cooler. And in that, we're going to put our ribs. But to keep them separated for airflow, I have these racks, and they have feet on them. And so we're basically just going to put our ribs on these racks. Because I live in Florida, I have to have something cold. So we're going to put ice in these Ziploc bags and just set these Ziploc bags down in the cooler and around the meat. Okay, to assemble our smoker, we're going to need to take two bags of ice and throw them in the bottom. We're going to take our first rack of ribs and set it on top of the ice, not touching, and then take the second rack, set it on top of the first, and then take our final cookie rack, set it on top of that one, and throw three bags of ice to keep the temperature down and then we're going to go work on our smoke generator. So now that we've got our smoker built we just need the smoke and I'm going to use this neat little smoke generator called a smoke pistol because it's going to allow me to put this hose all the way to the bottom of the smoker and not add any extra heat to my smoker. Plus these easy to light cartridges come in tons of flavors. So let's get this thing lit and smoking. Okay so now we've got this thing smoking you got the easiest part. You just get to hang out for the next four or five hours. I'm going to let mine smoke for probably four hours, but you can smoke it for as long or as short as you like. Just make sure that your cooler is in a nice shady place the entire time. All right, so it's been several hours, and this, these are about as smoky as I want them. Um, it's time to take them out, put them in some tin foil, and take them into the kitchen to bake them. And what I really like about the smoke pistol is, as long as it's been, the smoke is still going strong. So it takes a lot of the work out of smoking. All right, so once you get your ribs inside out of the smoker, you want to put them in tin foil and wrap them up nice and tight to steam them while we bake them in the oven. And when you're done, it should look something like this. So now we have our ribs wrapped in tin foil and our oven preheated to 350. So we're going to stick these on there for about an hour or until they are done to your liking. So our ribs are done. They've reached an internal temperature of 170, but we need to put them in a pan and let them sit for at least 10 or 15 minutes. Now, once they've cooled down, you can slice them up and serve them with your favorite sides. But it doesn't really matter how you eat them, because the result is pretty much always the same. 